Alright, I am recently back from Aluxcon 2019. Uh, I traveled out there to get to know more of the artists and some of the fellow collectors in the community, of the magic art collecting community. Um, it was a ton of fun, a great experience, and uh, was able to bring a bunch of really cool stuff back. Uh, had to get it back <laughs> any way I could, so the best way I thought of was to get it in this cardboard box and check it. Uh, not exactly the the ideal way, but uh, it was quicker than trying to send it through FedEx and I felt like it'd be handled less that way. So as you can see, the lovely TSA redecorated it for me and I haven't had a chance to open it to see what they've done to it yet, so I'm Hoping all is well, but let's see. So, you will be with me here on this little journey. I love how they have to inspect everything. TSA. They package it somewhat well, it looks like. And they inspect it. So, some of this was work that I had picked up at the show that I purchased before, and some of it was stuff that I actually got at the show, and I'll try to delineate between the two. Huh. Well, yeah, I kind of figured they sent me this little notice of baggage, it left a little notice of baggage inspection. Uh, that was kind of obvious, <laughs> and there's tape all over it, and they that they had gone through it. So, um, brought this little pillow from home. Never leave home without a good pillow on the plane. And we'll get rid of that. Uh, all right, so let's dig in here. A few little goodies that I found at Walmart. I collect Star Wars Legos, so I picked up a few poly bags there at the Walmart when I was picking up all this packing material. Uh, so those came back and who doesn't love a snake, right? That's a gift for a family member. All right, well, first is first. This was a piece that I bought from Omar and Sheila Rayon. Rayon, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, this piece I had seen last week, they do a, they have a Facebook group that they post a lot of their images on and this is, an image that they had posted that they created specifically for LuxCon. It's of a mouse kind of riding a bucking turtle, if you can see that at all. It's actually a really cool piece and fell in love with it the moment I saw it. I'm going to try to take this tape off so you can get a better look. Anyway, and it came framed so I was a little concerned uh, sending it home and with a framed picture with glass, but I had been taught this trick about putting strips of tape across it and that should help so that seems to have helped so we're intact that's that's good news so just removing the tape real quick and get a full view of that beautiful piece now this isn't magic but it, he is a magic artist and I really love his work and this one I'll be putting in my wife's office or maybe in our family room. Continue on. All right, this is cardboard filler. All right, this was a piece from another magic artist, Jeff Miracola. Thought this piece was really cool. And for that price, and you can see that sticker, 75 bucks for an original piece of art, magic or not, by a magic artist. And that was just a good deal. It's just a werewolf with a spear. Looks like he's ready for battle. I love, I love the grin on his face. You can see that very well. <laughs> Still makes me laugh seeing it. So this is a piece I plan on maybe giving to my brother if he, if he deserves it. Or I might end up keeping it. I, I really like it, so. I haven't decided quite yet, but I definitely had to have it, so. Ah, another piece that is magic related I picked up at the art show. Uh, this is, I believe he said it was Raging Minotaur. It's a piece from Portal, the first Portal set by Scott Fisher. 
Uh, it's one that uh, I thought was really cool, just the colors he uses, the purples and the, the darker blues and, and reds and oranges just contrast really well and, and the weapons, it almost looks like a Batleth from uh, Star Trek. <laughs> So I thought that was kind of cool, and then obviously this big axe, so it's another piece I picked up. Very cool. And this, this is one that I didn't get at the show, but I was actually, I purchased it from Mike Lineman. Um, couldn't fit it in there flat, and this one's going to need a little bit of restoration, but it's the box art piece for a battle box art that came out in the early or late 90s, early 2000s, I believe. So it's going to need a little bit of restoration and flattening out, but I thought it was extremely cool, so I wanted to bring this one home. So you can see it's got a b bunch of knights about ready to make battle with a group of goblins. Try to showcase that a little bit better. See how cool this is. This giant scene, knights versus goblins. It's actually relatively large piece. Can get an idea of how big this thing is. So we'll we'll be taking that to a professional restore and having it. Sorry, I'm still kind of backwards trying to make sure that see this thing. So we're going to have some of these things uh, professionally restored and hopefully get this piece looking like new, some of these creases that have formed in it. So it's a project to work on. Alright. Oh, this was kind of cool. I have yet to play it, but this was a game that I found by, uh, it says here, what was his name? Jimmy Ellerth, Hero Tales of the Tomes. It's a complete game in what looks like a little book. It was only 30 bucks. So you might want to check it out. I think his, yeah, right there's the website. Taleofthetomes.com. Anyway, maybe I'll do a review. Let's get back to the art. Alright, and here's a bunch I was able to pack away in this. Container. Go through all these one by one. So much stuff. It's very cool. Right here. Right, I'm going to save that for last because that's my favorite piece. Alright, so this one is actually a really cool piece from Aaron Miller. We called it The Tiger's Eye. It's based on a book by L. Ron Baum. So again, not a magic piece, but a very cool piece by a magic artist. You can see some of the detail there. The tiger's eye. So this this is based on, again, a short story by the same author of the Wizard, Wizard of Oz series um, called The Tiger's Eye. It's basically about a magician who's tricked into turning into a, a very powerful medium by by turning into the eye of a creature and he jumps into the, a tiger and the tiger becomes ferocious and it was interesting it's an interesting read I highly recommend it but I just the art is so cool I just really wanted to have it and it was such a great price thanks Aaron for that by the way uh, so we'll set that one aside another piece by Aaron Miller so I, I live here in Utah um, get it right set up and Aaron was actually here recently oops, for a quick visit with some other artists and went to the Museum of Natural History that we have here at the University of Utah. And uh, I follow him on Twitter and on Facebook, and he posted this one would be for sale. So the minute I saw it on his website, I, I grabbed it. So thanks again, Aaron, for those two pieces. Really cool. All right. Um, You'll see on my site, I'm going to be posting an interview I had with this gentleman who created this painting. This is actually from uh, Magic the Gathering. Ugh, I'm so bad at that. I have to get better. Let's, let's pull this out. 
This one I wanted to show a little bit more detail on because it's very cool. You can see, let me get my head out of the way. The artist actually modeled for this. This is Matt Stewart, everybody. There's a good close up of Matt's face when he's looking scared. <laughs> this is the card uh, here Paranoid Parish Blade. Okay, Matt Stewart. And I'll be posting an interview I did with Matt. And that, that's one of the things I'll be doing on this channel is posting cool art I find, other art that looks interesting, not necessarily my art. And just just art in general, Magic the Gathering art and, and uh, collectibles and, and also uh, altered artwork. So very cool piece, ready for battle, holding this big pike, this big spear. So... Very cool piece that I picked up from Matt. Thanks again, Matt, for that. Now this is another Magic Artist piece, but not actually Magic that I picked up. It's from Larry McDougall. He does a series called Guelph, where he uh, paints animals in, in various medieval costume and, and tasks. So this was a little landscape I found that I thought was absolutely gorgeous. So snagged it up. I'm going to put this one in my son's son's room. So, anyway. And then these were actually two pieces I picked up before but just picked up at the show. Uh, this is Presence of the Master by Ceruello and uh, Soul Sculptor by Ceruello. So a couple really cool pieces from the old era of magic in the late 90s. This one was my favorite. It was a reprint from the Legends card, but uh, very cool art nonetheless. So I really am glad to have that in my collection. Get a good look at it. And a couple more pieces. And moving on, I um, was able to pick up a bunch of sketches. I'll share with you those, but also uh, Mr. McDonald had this little piece of R2-D2 for those of you who know, know me very well, I'm a huge Star Wars fan so for a hundred bucks he had this going and he had also a Jango Fett, but uh, you know I couldn't pass up leaving R2 there so I had to bring him home with me it's a very cool little painting and then got a group of sketches here by Filler crap, let me get to the fun stuff. So, these are a bunch of sketches by Eric Velhagen. So, I'll go through these. Um, this is an Ashen Hellhound sketch. He had a bunch of these, so I picked up the ones that were the most finished. You know, magic art is actually very affordable to be, to get into. I mean, I was picking up these sketches for like 50 to 75 bucks a piece, and they're really cool. This is Volcanic Gift. Um, this is Sea God's Revenge. So these are, are very close to complete works of art. I mean, they're not, not necessarily colored, but, I mean, you can see the detail. This one's the Salt Griffin. Just, just amazing work by Eric. And we have the Rhino token. Really cool. And then I was able to pick up one really big sketch that he had left. Um, this one was for Scorching Dragonfire from the recent set. I've really been wanting to pick up something from this set, uh, Throne of Eldraine. It's just been really fun to play and draft. I, I haven't been able to pick up any um, final works yet, but this is my first piece with the sketch. So I'm still hoping to find something that is available. There was a few pieces there that 
unfortunately I just wasn't able to grab. But uh, there's some sketches. Phil uh, Hagen is able to also grab this piece from a video game, uh, Legend of the Cryptids. It's the God of Battle from that game. Uh, Scott Murphy drew this piece, or illustrated this piece. It's actually really cool. It reminds me a lot of Magic Gathering or maybe, you know, Hearthstone. Uh, give you some more detail. Just holding this huge hammer with this bellowing energy coming out of his, his knee guards and his eyes and his shoulder pad and, and out of his hammer. So I just thought it was really cool. It reminded me of magic and you know it, it didn't carry the price that a magic piece normally would but a very very reasonable price of $250. So thank you Scott for that one. And then I was able to visit Ryan Panko's booth and he had a lot of preliminary sketches as well. Um, most of his final artwork had already sold by the time I got there, but uh, he still had a number of these really cool little final sketches. So I'll pull these off and show you. This came out of, looks like one of his drawing books. So I, I tried to buy as many of the same pieces as I could just to get an idea of, of his process. I think seeing an artist's process is, is really part of the fun. So these are all of the sketches for Sahili the Gifted. Uh, this is kind of a pose of her standing. And then you can see that he the final pose. And also some of the preliminary drawings of how he was kind of thinking about posing her. And then another piece with some of the, the background art. Oh didn't realize this one was double-sided so that's kind of cool even some more information just kind of the head head contours in different positions and then again with the, the little mechanisms in the background so I thought those were very fair they were only $20 a piece and I guess I got double duty on one of them so thanks for that Ryan got two pages for the price of one very cool and then the other one I bought was uh, for Atemsis All Seeing. So you can see some of the process that goes into posing in, in different thumbnails for these different pieces. So you can see he, he had kind of put Atemsis in different positions and maybe submitted these. I, I'll have to ask him. I, didn't get a chance to really chat with him. And then this one I really liked because you could kind of see different alternatives of how the Tempsis might be portrayed on the card. And then this is kind of more the final of how you see a Tempsis with with her wings open. And again, some more. So I didn't actually realize some of these were double sided, so that that's actually really cool. So thanks again, Ryan, for those. And now this, this last piece was the one that uh, I was super excited for. I mean, I, I wasn't sure that this was going to happen, so when it did, I, I almost jumped for joy, honestly. That <laughs> sounds kind of lame, but... So as a kid, I used to go to a place down here in southern Utah, well, central Utah, and we used to camp a lot, and uh, there was this little cave-looking thing that we'd go and and hang out in and pretend that we were spelunking. So th this was a piece that when I saw it, I, I just really wanted to, to inquire about it. Uh, this is Cave of Temptations by Winona Ryder. Um, as you can see, the piece is somewhat abstract. Uh, she has some really thick paint splotches on here, which I think were cool, especially on the, you know, around the cave and just the, just the little bits of energy that seem to be coming through the cave is all this green energy and blue energy is filtering through and the, the water's coming down and, and it's really hard to see but there's a little figure here at the entrance to the cave that you just you wouldn't see otherwise on the card hardly. I, I actually looked really hard before I picked this up 
at the card and I thought there might be a little figure but you couldn't really tell but you know picking it up you can actually see that there's actually a really cool little figure that obviously the wind must be blowing so again super excited to add this to my collection uh, I uh, think this is probably the coup de grace so to speak of the weekend uh, there were so many awesome pieces that I wasn't able to get uh, I know Omar had a piece from Throne of Eldraine that I really wanted, but just couldn't quite get to the the funds I needed together to purchase it at the show. Um, but again, guys, art is fun. I, I've switched from being a really competitive Magic player to be more of a casual Magic player and, and really appreciating the art and just the the history of the game. So that's all for now, and I appreciate your time. And... Uh, Hope to share some more art with you in the near future. Thanks for watching.